Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I gotta say, I gotta thank you guys for following me on Twitter. Working Money Channel has just reached 30,000 followers, so I gotta thank you guys for following me and, uh, you know, just being with me for all these years. I'm at about 85,000 subscribers on YouTube as well. I really do want to hit that 100,000 subscriber mark, and uh, I'm giving myself a goal by the end of the year. So if you guys find yourself watching the channel regularly, but maybe you haven't subscribed yet for whatever reason, please subscribe. I really do appreciate all you guys, seriously. You guys are what makes the channel possible. Possible. So just wanted to thank you guys for that. Uh, I wanted to start by mentioning this from T-Hole Betic. So this has to do with PaySend. They are expanding their cross-border money transfer service to Colombia with Movi or Movi a leading mobile wallet service in Colombia using global payments infrastructure company and Ripple customer TerraPay. So this is connected with TerraPay, but we also have to note Movi is backed by former Ripple executive Greg Kidd. So check this out, guys. PaySend, the card-to-card -card pioneer, an international payments platform today announced the expansion of its cross-border money transfer services to Colombia with Movi, a leading mobile wallet service in Colombia using global payments infrastructure company TerraPay. PaySend will enable U.S. and European customers to send money to their loved ones via the Mobi mobile wallets and help banked and unbanked Colombians carry out financial transactions from their mobile phones in real time. Just down here, international transfers with deposits to wallets or bank accounts are necessary to achieve greater inclusion and financial education. With traditional banking services evolving to become increasingly digitized, digital money transfers will continue to grow year on year and will facilitate the most important financial transactions in Colombia. So, Colombia, one of those regions of the world where uh, there are still a lot of unbanked and underbanked citizens. And so, you know, we are seeing more and more progress through these Ripple enabled companies, these technologies that are now allowing these people to uh, be able to send money across borders. A statement from Chief Strategy Officer Yero Rivoras and Managing Director uh, of PaySend. He said, global remittance plays an important role in the economic development in Latin America. Not only do cross-border money transfers increase investment opportunities and growth within the region, but it also helps to reduce poverty. So what we're seeing here is the democratization of payments. And if we can have more people sending payments, then obviously it is better for the economy. The economy then uh, is more robust, more money is moving through. And you know, with the older systems, it was always too expensive. You know, some, some were charging upwards of 10 to 15% per transaction. And you know, at a point, companies were saying, no, we cannot do this. And so they were moving to RippleNet, have been doing so over the last several years now. And so uh, PaySan, just another company, the latest to integrate with a RippleNet customer customer, in this case, namely TerraPay. And then we also have the uh, the Movi connection as well, which is backed uh, again by former Ripple executive Greg Kidd. So interesting news there. Wanted to thank T-Hole Betic for posting that. Crypto Eddie also bringing this to our attention. So another Japanese bank is using Ripple technology. This is Shimane Bank Limited, and they're now in MoneyTap Bank, further building out a powerful financial infrastructure of RippleNet, thanks to none other than SBI. Laying the payment rails enables more ODL. And so uh, this article originally in Japanese, let me just translate that real quick. Uh, so notice of the start of personal money transfer service for MoneyTap, which is again, Ripple enabled app for Shimane Bank customers, MoneyTap Co has added Shimane Bank Limited to the smartphone money transfer application money tap provided by the company. We are pleased to inform you that Matsu City Prefecture President Yoshio Suzuki, hereafter referred to as Shimane Bank, has connected and started providing an interpersonal money transfer service for the accompanying users from today. Money tap is an application for smartphones that realizes safe, immediate, and comfortable remittances between individuals. In addition to the bank account number, we have also implemented a remittance function using a mobile phone number and uh, by combining online identity verification at the time of the account registration and biometric authentication at the time of use. We aim to achieve both user experience or UX and security. We are here. In addition, Shyman Bank has a trust idiom app provided by SBI Digitrust Corporation. And so that is uh, how they are going to implement the security. So we have Ripple Partner SBI connected to this. Also, Shimane Bank, uh, I believe, is one of those uh, banks in the uh, the Japanese consortium of banks who have committed to utilizing RippleNet, uh, leveraging XRP, and we also have RippleNet customer money tap. So now, and I'm and I'm starting to put the pieces together. It seems as though. 2022 is not only going to be the year of the secondary and tertiary uh, partnerships with companies partnering with Ripple companies or Ripple enabled companies partnering with other companies. It's looking as though 
maybe, just maybe, 2022 is the year where we are going to see multiple partnerships amongst many Ripple partners partnering together to create something even better. And uh, in Japan, I mean, it's already very easy because so many of those companies are already Ripple enabled. But I have a feeling we are going to see more and more of this considering we are seeing more and more Ripple adoption in uh, regions of the world like the Latin American region, Southeast Asia as well. Africa is starting to pick up uh, on RippleNet adoption too. So interesting news. Wanted to thank Crypto Eddie for pointing that out. And it's not just cross-border payments. I mean, that was always the first prong of Ripple's strategy. But of course, we know Ripple does help foster the XRPL, the ecosystem, to provide more utility for XRP. Well, I just saw this from DJ Peter Vass. Ripple grants feature $100,000 for NFT-related XRPL integration. So Feature, they're an entertainment and music marketplace platform. They were just awarded $100,000 to develop uh, and support growth as part of RippleX's XRPL grants program. Uh, the grant will accelerate Feature into Web 3.0 blockchain and add additional value to the XRPL ecosystem. Feature connects artists, producers, influencers, and a representation for collaboration and commerce. It provides a two-sided buyers and sellers web-based solution to the entertainment industry. Furthermore, it refines talent values, negotiations, and inefficient payment methods by expanding the opportunity for all artists and their representation to collaborate directly with other creators and buyers. So this sounds like the back end for creative types who want to uh, create their art, perhaps in the form of NFTs, but also to streamline that back end part of it uh, that, you know, a lot of people, a lot of artists that I know at least, uh, maybe except for the accountant types, helps them to streamline that because in a lot of cases they don't want to have to deal with that. This expansion will enhance the platform to accommodate blockchain-based assets such as crypto payments, smart contracts, and NFTs on the XRPL. So interesting, uh, which are part of a larger Web.3, uh, or sorry, Web 3.0 infrastructure. Feature has already attracted high-profile talent such as John Monopoly, that's Kanye West's manager, uh, Chris Lofton, star of 50 Cent's Power Book 4, Force and Caper, award-winning DJ and producer from the United Kingdom. With the funding provided by Ripple X, Feature will release new cutting edge enhancements to their powerhouse platform. So interesting news there. The story does continue, guys, and I will link this in the description if you guys want to read more, if you're interested in uh, more use cases for the XRPL. Cross-border payments, you know, that had been the focus. We have been moving into more NFT-related projects. Uh, we know NFTs are getting bigger, so I can see why Ripple is uh, now looking to support these uh, NFT-related projects on the XRPL with grant money. The more use cases on the XRPL, the more valuable the network becomes. And so this is just another example of that. I wanted to thank DJ Peter Vass for pointing that out. And I mean, startups really are the lifeblood of any new and emerging industry. Could you imagine if the guys from Apple or if Bill Gates, maybe from Microsoft, whether you like them or not, today <laughs> decided never to create what they had created? Well, I mean, you know, we would live in a very, very different world. Could you imagine if, you know, maybe the guys at Google never wanted to start up Google? Or maybe if Jeff Bezos, you know, decided, nah, well, why, why am I selling books through Amazon.com? That's just such a silly idea. Startups are, of course, the lifeblood, you know, they are a spark of innovation that helps progress move forward, that helps micro and macro economies alike. Think of how prosperous the United States, for example, has become because of their tech startups. Ripple just being one of those examples. Well, what if I told you that? I know, I know this isn't a far-fetched theory, not, uh, not whatsoever, considering what we have seen coming out of the SEC. But what if I could show you, what if I could point to you more proof that the big banks were purposely trying to stifle new innovative startups in order to keep the lion's share of the pie? Of course, you know, these legacy systems want to maintain control. And so, you know, they see startups. In some cases, they don't see them as uh, too much of a threat. But when you can come up with a better mousetrap and your competition knows it, well, that's when the claws come out, right? Well, I got to give Dawdler for XRP credit uh, on this. He sent this to me. I also saw this on Twitter this morning, retweeted out by XRP meme guy here. The real reason the SEC sued Ripple. So guys, this is a clip of Gary Gensler in 2018 telling his students at MIT how the incumbents try to actually slow down startups. This is coming from the horse's mouth himself. Gary Gensler, before he was at the SEC, essentially stating big banks, corporate banks, the commercial banks, they don't want to see innovation because they realize down the road that these players are going to be their competition, so they try to stifle it. I mean, I'm putting two and two together here. 
The reason the SEC is really dragging out this ridiculous court case with Ripple and XRP, let me play you guys this clip and you judge for yourself. Central monopolist with another central monopolist, a lot of commercial banks aren't terribly excited about that. Maybe you're going to have to give some ownership. Maybe you'll have to give 50% of your ownership to the 20 banks that are now, you know, part of this. I mean, there are other ways to build incentive systems. Maybe you put a native token in there and you give, you give, you know, them the native token. You know, so there may be other incentive ways to beat the current monopolist and, 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 and you know, but, but I, having been around commercial banks for a long time, they really are looking for ways to, um, uh, to, to replace their aggregators in their back office, whether it's clearing, settlement, exchanges, uh, credit agencies. But they are deeply understanding because they, they are pretty ambitious and very good at making money as well. They deeply understand that every idea that's pitched to them is somebody who currently – is small but wants to get big and gain market power. So they're also they're also always thinking about how to ensure that there's a check to slow down your startup from gaining market power five, ten, and fifteen years from now. They don't want you to be the next clearing house like uh, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange or Intercontinental Exchange. They don't want you to be the next um, central node of market power. So you might share some of that with them, or you might find an incentive system. Straight from the horse's mouth, Gary Gensler from this MIT lecture way back in 2018, essentially stating straight up that the banks do not want to relinquish power and that they will try to thwart startups from achieving greatness because they know essentially at the end of the day that these guys will be their competition. It's all making sense now, isn't it? Um, And so again, this was Gary Gensler from 2018. And guys, think about it for a second. 2018 was an interesting time in the XRP community. If you guys were around back then, what Gary Gensler was speaking about in this clip was basically exactly what Bearable Guy was talking to us about the banks, the puppet strings, the big players, central banks, having control over those little banks, the legacy players, as represented here by the puppet and the hand. I believe this bearable guy riddle, this was one of the first ones, was originally dropped back in February of 2018, so about four years ago now. Fast forward to today, and we have seen so many developments on the XRPL. We have seen Ripple gain a lot of traction, gain a lot of ground over the last four years, succeeding, despite the trials and tribulations that they have faced. But anyway, what do you think about this? Gary Gensler speaking directly about how, for example, the legacy banking system, they want to preserve their power. They do not want a challenging organization to come in and subvert the traditional system, which is exactly what Ripple is doing. Guys, if you didn't catch this morning's video, Brad Garlinghouse did make an appearance on Fox Business and uh, said some pretty thought-provoking things in that interview. I'll link that video up here. The SEC knows they're not going to win it all. And now it's looking as though it is quite apparent that the SEC is trying to hold Ripple back. I don't know if I have to mention this again, but uh, I think I will for those of you guys who may not know that Gary Gensler's twin brother, yes, there are two of them. Robert N. Gensler is the vice president of T. Rowe Price Group, Inc., part of TD Asset Management, which is a big player, a big bank in the United States. So Gary, perhaps helping his brother out, the big banking system, trying to help thwart the startups to gain market share in the banking sector. Hey, I mean, he said it in the clip himself. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.